Hey there everybody, it's Ryan from Cataclysm Now, and today we'll be playing Borodino 20 from GMT's Fading Glory pack of Napoleonic 20 series. So in the wake of um, the Battle of Smolensk, where the French army wasn't able to decisively defeat the Russians, uh, the Tsar ordered um, Kutuzov to take control of, or take command of the Russian army, and to make it stand uh, just west of Moscow at Borodino. Um, reflecting uh, Kutuzov's um, certainty that the French were going to attack north of uh, the Kolochka River, um, he held the bulk of his army uh, in reserve, thinking the main blow um, of the French would come from the north, which in fact it comes from the west here. So there is a mechanism in which the units that are encased in these white hexes are withheld and um, there is a um, die roll that is made at the beginning of a, a Russian movement turn to see if these can be unlocked um, and unfrozen to meet the, the threat from the West. Now there is a variant where that's not included, but we'll be playing with it. We're gonna go to the historical line. Um, in addition, there's another um, variant about uh, Davu coming from the south here, uh, attempting a flanking march. It's interesting to note about Napoleon's campaign, um, or his tactical decisions, he seems to be losing a lot of the panache that he had uh, that made him incredibly famous at uh, Marengo or Kohl or you know, Austerlitz, his sort of crown um, jewel in his... Uh, and his military um, successes. Um, but by this point, he suffers from a lot of myopic thinking. He just settles for frontal assaults against um, nearly fixed positions. Uh, we'll see that basically his downfall at uh, Waterloo as well. Instead of attempting some sort of flanking maneuver, he just um, hit Wellington. And then he himself was enveloped on the right um, by the Prussians. But anyway, this, uh, we'll go ahead and do the playthrough for for Dino 20, this is the setup. Um, all the French units will come on uh, as the first uh, day progresses. Uh, the battle will last September 5th through September 7th. Um, for the morale, the Russians do start ahead at 8 with the French at 7. And again, the objective is to drive the other side's morale down to zero. So we'll go ahead and start moving the, Rush, or the French uh, on to the western side of the board and see what uh, maneuvers they can make. Okay, we're at the beginning of turn three, which is the uh, dusk of uh, September 5th, the beginning of the French turn. Uh, they had two infantry corps come on, the third and the fourth. Uh, the third cavalry swung to the south, um, kind of triggering a plus one die, uh, die roll modifier for the Russians. Uh, they were able to free up one unit, and uh, we went with the sixth corps that moved just east of the Great Redoubt forward to help screen and block um, the Kolochka River. At some point with their releases, I'd like to um, move forward the reserve artillery because they have the artillery support. That'd be a good use of the Great Redoubt or even at the Fletches, uh, which is another uh, secondary line of um, uh, fortified positions that the Russians have dug. Uh, and then we've got the Shevardino Redoubt up here. Uh, we also had a militia unit come on um, as a function of the random event. So uh, it's the Russians turn now. They will attempt to close uh, on the Shevardino Redoubt and uh, we'll have ourselves our first exchange of fire um, as we head into dusk of September 5th. Despite the overwhelming firepower odds, the French only rolled a two on the plus four differential, and that's a defender withdraw. The perks of being in a redoubt is um, they retreat fewer than one hex, which means withdrawals are turned into no effect. Uh, so the seventh corps is held against um, some pretty aggressive assaults. Now in uh, 
typical Russian fashion, I guess, for this campaign, a, a random card was drawn, a Katusol Vasilates, where um, they can't release on the defense release plan. Uh, so no units were let go. However, um, on the Russian turn for Dusk, uh, turn three, uh, the six score is coming down to this forest to help, well, threaten the the town of Shevardino because it is an objective hex for the French. Um but also to potentially cover any retreats they may have to do. Um, and the Bagratian cavalry um, left its positions just south of the Kalachka River and uh, are swinging south for a counterattack against the second cavalry, uh, which this will be a differential of plus two. Uh, so we're going into the Russian uh, turn three, uh, dusk of September 5th. All right, evening. Uh, turn four, September 5th, 1812. Uh, Napoleon has arrived on the field. Uh, the third and fourth corps are locked in zones of control, so they couldn't maneuver out, so they couldn't bring the eighth or the fifth to bear, but they will be in reserve to potentially follow up um, on any advances. Uh, the first cavalry corps abandoned its position in Utica and is moving up um, to participate in the attack against Bagrachin. Um so we've got Marat, 2nd and 1st Cavalry Corps against Bagrachin, and then we've got Napoleon in command of the 3rd and 4th Corps against the Shevardino Redoubt. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, resolve these combats. Uh, this will be the last opportunity for the French to attack um, for this day. Um, they're obviously looking to expel the Russians out of the Shevardino Redoubt um, so they can move up and press um, the rest of the Russian positions. And the Russians continue to tenaciously hold the Shevardino Redoubt. Um, they opted to spend a morale point to send in the reserves, um, which converted it to a, a plus three differential. But that didn't really help because the uh, French still rolled a four, which is a defender routed. Uh, and then when the Russians rolled their die to see how far they would retreat, they rolled a one, which they get to ignore that because they are in a redoubt. However, they're still routed. Um, but the perk of also being in a redoubt is that zones of control don't extend into it. So you're never forced to attack out of it uh, the, way, um, the way you would be in towns. So um, the Russians uh, are seeing opportunity here to counterattack um, to potentially help stave off because the, the French can't attack again this turn. Uh, so that gives them a couple of hours to release new units and bring more units up. Um, to defend the Fletches or even the Shepardino Redoubt here. Um, I didn't see anything in the rules about the leaders being tied up by the rule. Um, so uh, to get, get over that command paralysis, I uh, just committed Kutusov and Bagrachin here um, to help with their attacks. Because again, if you're not within command radius of commander, attacking units um, subtract one to their combat values. So presently, we've got Bagrachin um, attacking the 2nd Cavalry. Um, I don't know if we'll soak off. Ah, we'll see what the French do. They can technically um, disengage uh, on their reaction phase. But we'll go ahead and resolve uh, the Russian attacks, and then we'll move in uh, to the night turn and see where we stand on the morning of September 6th. Okay, we made it to the morning of September 6th. Um, with the French failing to take the Shepardino Redoubt moving into the morning of the 6th, um, the Russians were looking to um, potentially extract the 7th Corps uh, to preserve it, um, but then they got this wonderful General's Argue card, which essentially made it virtually impossible to extricate it because um, units outside of different command prerogatives couldn't end the same hex. Um, uh, end up adjacent to other units of different command prerogatives, uh, nor could they move through. Uh, and then disengaging the seventh, which is lead because it's at night, you can only move one, uh, would leave it um, exposed without the benefits of the redoubt. So, like a sacrificial lamb, the seventh corps is going to stay there. Um, but they were all the Russians were also able to uh, activate the fifth elite. So that will be coming up to either occupy the redoubt. But the Russians are essentially uh, going to form a more solid line 
a very narrow, um, plus the forest helps stop. So this will be a nice um, bottleneck uh, for the Russians. Currently, morale stands at French have the seven, uh, seven and the uh, Russian have ten. Um, each side recovers, well, the French recover one morale at the end of the night, um, but the Russians recover two. Um, but I think the way they balance that is if uh, both of these are uh, occupied, then the, the, the Great Redoubt and Gorky, then they lose not just the morale point for each of them, but additional points as well. So uh, their morale can plummet uh, precipitously. Uh, Marat was broken, um, so was the 2nd Cavalry Corps with the, the Russian counterattack here. Marat uh, came back. Um, he was deployed north of the Kalachka this time, but the 2nd uh, Cavalry uh, wasn't fully eliminated, but uh, cannot be uh, rallied until, or uh, another attempt to rally it can't be made till the end of um, turn 11, which is the night of September 6th. So we'll go ahead and... Um, see how uh, the day progresses and if the French uh, can take the Shevardino Redoubt and press their attacks against um, the forming Russian line here. Much French indecision. Um, we're in the afternoon of September 6th and um, the French were able to take the Shevardino Redoubt um, the early morning, uh, you know, breaking the, the Seventh Corps. And then the subsequent turn, midday, uh, they drew the random card Imperial Indecision, which prevented them from moving into enemy zones of control, thereby preventing any attacks. Um, so that enabled the Russians to shuffle some forces around. Uh, they brought up the elite 5th Guard to guard the Kalachka River. We do have the 1st Corps and Marat in command of the 2nd Cavalry Corps that's now threatening that. Um, we've got a, a militia unit here that is defending across the Kalachka. Um, and then we've got the Jaeger unit that occupied the Great Redoubt. Uh, Bagrachin's 8th Corps is still sitting in the Fletches, and then uh, Kutuzov and the 6th Corps are occupying the town above it. And then we've got this uh, artillery reserve um, in reserve uh, with that, add a, that will add a plus one uh, to either of them using the optional um, artillery support rules. So we got the Bagrachin, which is uh, getting the plus one from defending this forest, which will kind of um, prevent enemies uh, from passing through Hex uh, 0708. Um, so they have to be funneled through. So the bottleneck is closing here. And then uh, wisely, the first ma uh, militia occupied this rough ground. So it's now a, a three defending that. Um, so it's... Uh, It'll be a tough nut to crack, especially for these two cavalry corps. But um, we'll see what uh, card uh, cards the French draw, and hopefully they'll be able to close distance and launch some attacks. Their entire army is on the board. Uh, the Russians start, but obviously they're limited with their defense release plan. Still actually a lot um, to be released. We've got uh, two cavalry corps here, and then we've got three infantry corps, and then a Cossack um, all the way up here. All these have yet to be released. Um, so yeah, we'll see what the French can do. Uh, they really need to close. Um, they are running out of time and space. All right, heading into a dusk of uh, September 6th, which is turn nine, uh, the Russians have lost the Great Redoubt. Um, they launched a counterattack. Well, what happened was the before was the, the French First Corps was able to cross the Klochka River. Um, uh, forcing back the uh, the elite fifth, um, but because this was a zone of control, uh, they pulled in the Jaeger units um, to counterattack uh, and try to push them back across the Klotchka. They rolled a one on a differential of zero, which is attacker routed, um, and then the defending unit was able to advance after combat uh, because they won. Um, and they went ahead and took the Great Redoubt. There's still a firm defensive line here, um, but that really throws into question uh, whether or not the, the Russians can hold this line. Um, in the south, uh, Bokrachin uh, cavalry here was able to push back the 1st Cavalry Corps and maintain order. Um, 
so they still have a, a sufficient screen here in the south. Now the question um, remains if the um, Russian or the, if the French can bring their corps to bear um, and see if they can press their advantage along this weakened uh, section of the line. Napoleon and the Fourth Corps was able to seize the Fletches, um, pushing back uh, Bogachin in command of the Eighth Corps. Um, the First Corps was able to counterattack and leave the First or the Great Redoubt, and then um, Marat's uh, Third Cavalry um, was also able to expand uh, the bridgehead. Uh, Kutusov uh, is moving uh, to counterattack not only against the Redoubt but also against the Eighth Corps and the First Corps here, um, Barclay in command of the. Um, elite fifth. Uh, morale currently stands at Russians five, the French seven. And we're right now on the Russian portion of the dusk of uh, September 6th, which is turn nine. We'll see if the Russians can um, push back. Limited success for the Russians. Uh, Barclay wind up pushing the first corps back into the Great Redoubt. Um, there was a major exchange here um, to, to strength. Uh, cores were lost, um, and then the Bagratian cavalry was able to hold its own. Now, the French, um, on their last opportunity um, before uh, for the daylight, completely leaves to counterattack uh, in the evening here. They'll be pushing up from the Great Redoubt. Marat here is at a negative one, just in, uh, northwest of Gorky. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if well, he'll be able to fall, fall back across the ford um, if needed. Um, attacks against the Bagratian, uh cavalry, but Napoleon will be leading the 4th and the 3rd Corps against the uh, Russian uh, reserve here. So, as it stands, Great Redoubt and the Fletches have both been knocked out. Um, these are the major um, defensive lines. Um, we've got a couple corps that can still be activated um, if we'll do the usual rolling. Uh, they're all activated if... Um, Actually, is, if it's the Great Redoubt, let me double check. They may all be um, released now at this point. Yeah, if the French unit ever occupied the Great Redoubt. So actually, uh, everybody here uh, can move. So what I'll do is um, move some of these Russian units. Uh, I'll keep with the French where they are. Um, shouldn't affect it, at least... Uh, it shouldn't affect it at all because the only ones that haven't been activated are uh, Barclays Cavalry, the 3rd Infantry Corps up here, and then the, the Cossacks. So um, not affecting this turn, but everyone is uh, released. Okay, we come to the morning of September 7th, which is turn 12. Uh, the Russians have reformed their line here, as you can see, uh, with Gorky sort of centering it. Uh, we've got the Reserve artillery supporting and the uh, eighth, the pretty strong eighth um, corps on the southern wing with the two, uh, basically a, a large screen of cavalry here um, guarding the the far um, extremes of the the Russian lines here. The Klochka um, sh sort of shielding the the movement of the third. It's coming up, um, but this will be. A hard line to assault here, but the the Russians are going to try to do it. Uh, they've got six morale compared to seven, uh, so they are certainly at a disadvantage here, even though they've been able, through a series of bloody frontal assaults, just like it was historically, the Shevardino Redoubt, the Great Redoubt, and the Fletches have all fallen. Um, but let's see if they can break this, uh, the third line of Russian defenses. Disaster struck the Russians, um, with the French pushing up, um, they wind up dislodging them from Gorky, and again just pushing back their line. The Russians sought to counterattack. I don't know if that was necessarily prudent, because now they have an orderly withdrawal card, which basically any um, unit can be eliminated on a line of, uh, line of um, communications to prevent um, or to, to increase morale. but. Their series of counterattacks just went disastrously. Um, four routed units. Um, we had a broken unit up here. Um, so yes, they were proceeding with that orderly withdrawal. Uh, they only have two morale points compared to the French five. So uh, let's see if we go into um, the next turn, whether or not 
um, uh, midday, uh, September 7th, whether or not the French can seal the deal. Here's the final positions, midday, September 7th. French hold off a victory. Uh, they wind up routing a uh, this Cossack unit here, uh, pushing it e uh, eastward, uh, just south of the Fletches. But really, what spelled doom for the uh, Russians is they shouldn't have had, they shouldn't have countered attack. Um, I guess they had a habit when, um, I don't like putting, leaving, because of the rigid zones of control, don't leave it, like leaving core in disadvantageous attacks. So to help alleviate that, um, oftentimes uh, the Russians were counterattacking uh, to soak up, um, which puts a lot more at stake. Um, it would have been better just to have that one unit break as opposed to all four <clears throat> um, or five roll terribly. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a decisive victory for uh, the French, um, something that eluded them in the uh, the actual 1812 campaign. Um, even with these pieces here, I don't know if the outcome of the campaign would be too much. Uh, it doesn't obviously delve into that, but historically what happened was, um, I think the, the French technically won the Battle of Bordino. They were able to push the Russians off, but again, they didn't inflict that decisive defeat. Uh, and so the Russian army kept retreating. Um, and then Napoleon occupied uh, Moscow, but the Russians had already torched it. And by that point, <clears throat> he couldn't stay in Moscow for the winter, so he decided to return back to uh, friendlier territory. And of the 600,000 men that he brought into um, Russia in June of 1812, he only returned with, I think, less than 10%, so like 60,000, which is obviously uh, catastrophic. And then from there, you've got the... Uh, I think it's the War of the Six Coalition, um, where they, essentially Prussia gets back in, uh, Austria, Russia, Britain, all push Napoleon out of uh, Poland, the Holy Roman Empire, um, leading to his uh, first abdication in 1814. Anyway, uh, that's been the playthrough for Borodino, um, Borodino 20, part of uh, GMT's Fading Glory, Napoleonic 20 series. You're still watching. Um, thanks for sticking around, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one, which will be Waterloo.